So my name is Daniel Zilaf. I'm uh, with PGS Software uh, in Marketing and I'd like to welcome you formally to today's webinar. Um, we're very glad to be part of the Industrial Generation Network and um, I think there's nothing left for me to do than uh, give the floor to my colleagues Anjay and Adam. Thank you, Daniel. So hello everybody, welcome to our session. During the next 30 minutes we would like to address some myths and stereotypes about machine learning and also um, the, the use of machine learning for uh, augmenting very complex processes. Um, so we we'll do it based on a, one example we choose from our projects and we'll show you uh, our achievements in this project and also what tools and approach we use for it. So, I see a lot of names on the list, so probably you can start. Um, I will start with a short introduction. So I'm Andrew Regal um, at PGS responsible for, for relations with our customers and uh, our growth strategy. I have 50 years experience in, in the industrial field and I'm helping our partners and customers to grow with the choose of the right technology. Uh, yeah. Um, hello, I'm uh, Adam Gurul. I'm data scientist at PGS Software. Uh, on, at PGS Software, I'm working uh, as uh, in, with projects related to artificial intelligence, machine learning, helping the clients to transform and extract the value from their data. Okay, good. So we'd like to start the session with a quick question. So Daniel will. Uh, Turn on the polling question now and, and please uh, put your answers. Yeah, Daniel? Right, so um, the polling question is the following What do you consider the biggest obstacles in implementing machine learning in your company? Is it process complexity? Is it duration? Is it um, resources or ethics? You can select uh, more than one answer. And um, by the end of it, I will uh, share the result with all of you and um, we can move on with the presentation. So I'll give everybody um, a minute. And I think the polls are in. I will be closing the polling question in about maybe three, three to five seconds. <laughs> Here we go. And now let's quickly look at the answers. Anjay, would you, would you like to comment on them? Of course. Um, so I guess this question, uh, the answers are quite aligned with this, what, what we heard from our customers. So uh, it is mainly project comp complexity and resources, which are the main points um, raised by, by our customers. And also, and also um, when, we, when, we, when we are talking with, with people in, in the same area we are. So, um, here you can see um, a list with with answers from our customers uh, when we are when we are talking about machine learning and their beliefs and and what what they think about the first steps going into this direction. So we heard from our customer that they are a little bit scared uh, and they think machine learning is like a black box for them. So um, they some decisions are taken. But they are not really sure uh, what was what was the, behind this decision, and and uh, this is one thing we will mention later on and how to solve this. Uh, other thing is um, our customers are scared about the high costs of development and low return of investment out of um, this kind of solutions and uh, implementing these solutions. Um, also, there is an ethic part uh, mentioned uh, in your answers. Um, that 
implementation of machine learning means to replace people and to release people uh, using algorithms instead. For for some of the uh, customers and 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 uh, people, um, we ask for um, uh, they are scared that for for starting a machine learning project, they need a gigantic amount of data, and and um, this this will be also uh, answered uh, later on. And the last one is what what was also mentioned in your answers that um, our customers think that the augmenting process. Uh, the processes um, they they need a huge amount of developers resources and that that the belief is that that the process is simply too complex to do it so all of this point um, we we'll try to answer on all of these points uh, in, in, in based on our project example and we can jump into this this example so we we, we call this this uh, case an engineer's burden to bear so so we will tell you a story about uh, engineer decisions and what huge impact it can have on our daily uh, lives and um, a few months ago one of our customers um, a quality assurance company providing services in this area for uh, huge factories and manufacturing uh, companies um, producing very critical machinical, mechanical parts like airplane engines, turbines, uh, using for this uh, ultrasonic scans and working on a high pressure and time pressure. Um, then um, a whole series of parts is waiting for the feedback to be, um, to be used in the production. So our, starting this project, our expectation was that such company for sure use the models equipment, newest frameworks, and is doing advanced plans. But the reality was a slightly other. So um, what we very quickly recognized was that, that, of course, the factories are using the newest equipment for, for doing this kinds. But uh, on the other side, the, our partner is um, doing the post activities only based on expert judgments. They, they had great engineers doing this, but lacked of any kind of automation. And exactly with this challenge, they, they, they uh, came to us and asked, hey, can you help us? And uh, what was the main challenge we recognized? So the main challenge you can see here on, on, on the screen. So um, to to do one single check and to to uh, do a review of one single part, uh, one engineer needed 22 hours. So um, so uh, these ultrasonic scanners are producing um, a numerical representation of the part. So tons of data needed to be reviewed by one single person during 22 hours. So um, one cycle for our customer to review one of ten different parts um, by 270 engineers took uh, circa one week and was a cost of four to five million US dollar for them. So a huge amount of, of um, data and also huge cost of, of these reviews. So additional challenge for us was that um, our partner already tried a few times to improve improve this solution and the way they are processing uh, these reviews. So they, they tried uh, by adding additional hardware um, and also some scripting approaches to implement visual basic scripts inside the access. But each of these attempts um, failed. So it was an additional challenge for us. And now we are coming um, to the way how we approach this problem. So we started with our usual approach, so we are using uh, design thinking to, for the first phase and first uh, workshops. So we started with one day rapid elaboration workshop where it was <coughs> pretty fast, very clear for us that what, what is the problem. So that high skilled people are spending their time inefficient on, on reviewing Excel uh, and numbers 
and um, with with a lack of usability and and in a very hard environment for that. So at this moment, the <coughs> the problem was still a very complex for us. So we, we decided to to go further and split this huge um, problem and process, which was very complex, uh, into smaller parts. So we decided to tackle each of the smaller problems by one phase, project phase and started directly with the Excel and um, the problem that it was very hard to review this Excel and uh, identify the, the problem in a tiny manner. So the first phase um, was exactly to replace and, and create a visualization of, of, the, of, the, of the numerical representation of the parts. So uh, we decided to, to spend two weeks on prototyping. So directly after the elaboration phase and elaboration workshop, we, uh, we created three prototypes of the visual prototypes of the solution and, um, and tested this with the end user in a pretty close loop and received the first experiences and the first feedback from the end users. So uh, this was the baseline for us to decide together with our partner what will be the next steps and what what uh, what concept from the usability and ui perspective we will choose so after having this decision we decided together to have a very short poc phase so proof of, the proof of concept and the goal of this proof of concept was to uh, have the first to craft the first piece of software and give give it to a broader um, bench of people so we, we selected 30, 30 um, engineers which, which should test this solution. So the results of this first POC phase was, was um, quite unexpected at, at this moment. So we created a 3D visual model in only six weeks and passed this over to the 30 engineers to start test on it. After four weeks of testing, we measured that the review time and time needed for, for, for review um, was reduced by eight hours. Um, we estimated also the expected cost savings and, and, um, and, um, and um, achieved also here quite good results. So the expected cost savings are by, were by 42 percentage and impact on the ROI by 68 percentage. So, at this moment, quite unexpected, and and every, uh, and the decision was clear for our end customer that we will go over to the phase two and three. So uh, having this decision, we started uh, phase two and three uh, in a very similar manner. So we learned on the experiences we gained, and uh, concentrated on the next problem. So now, before we are, we'll go to the um, phase four of our presentation and where we introduced in, uh, machine learning. Um, we would like to ask you the next question. So Dan, can you please put on the question? Hello again, uh, this is Daniel speaking and I have the question for you now. This is a polling question with uh, multiple uh, answers uh, and it goes as follows. Where do you see the biggest benefits of machine learning? predictive maintenance, increased throughput, cost savings, better use of manpower, decision support. You can select one or several answers um, over the next uh, a minute and a half, something like this. Mm. Should you have any issue, uh, any technical issues, um, just let me know uh, by popping a question in the question um, uh, chat. All right, the polls are coming in. I'm going to give it another five seconds. And thank you. We're closing the polls. 
let's have a quick look. Um, perhaps, um, Adam, would you like to comment on these answers? Yes, thank, thank you, Daniel, uh, and thank you all for your uh, input to this poll question. Uh, I, I'm really happy to see those answers because uh, this is uh, this shows uh, some kind of an awareness of uh, what can be achieved with artificial intelligence, with machine learning. Um, Actually, predictive maintenance is one of those areas where companies from uh, the manufacturing area are uh, interested the most, very often. Um, the better use of manpower is my favorite topic, and the cost savings are uh, probably uh, the, the hottest uh, the hottest for the CFOs. Um, the decision support is also uh, often the case, and I will be happy to, to talk about it uh, later um, when mentioning the, uh, the, the the projects we uh, accomplished uh, in the past. Mm, okay, so we got used to, to working in certain cycles in software development in the past. Currently, data science, uh, which is the uh, new, uh, very popular area of projects, uh, somehow derives from uh, from those experiences. And in data science, we also work in cycles. And um, those cycles uh, usually have four components, four co core components. And uh, I would like to introduce those components to, to, to all of you. So um, the, the first artifact I like to talk about is the dictionary. When we start the project, when there is a potential customer, uh, we often, we, we always start with uh, the data exploratory workshop where uh, we, we meet with the customer for a day or two uh, workshop and we brainstorm all together to determine the, um, to, to somehow um, determine the, the readiness, uh, the maturity of the organization in terms of, in terms of data. And based on, based on um, such workshop, we uh, define the processes that are candidates for the automation, partial or partially or, or in total. Uh, we define some kind of glossary. We uh, understand what kind of data uh, the company possesses and what else could be collected. And um, based on that, we uh, pick the first topic, the first subject, uh, for for the project and uh, then uh, we move to the uh, analyze phase where we try to analyze the data and we uh, look for insights deeper and deeper in the data and try to prepare this data for the in, into the formats that are suitable for machines to learn um, the, the third phase is usually the train phase where we try to supply where we supply this data uh, to the algorithms and uh, let them uh, train and then the, uh, the the knowledge that is hidden in the data. So we teach them how to make decisions. Um, then we validate it and uh, go to our customers. We share our discoveries uh, with people who are familiar with the processes, who used to own the processes, and um, and uh, answer the question whether those insights are reliable. Um, and uh, when we agree that those insights are are uh, actually valuable and uh, are and the customer decides to to take it into their uh, company, uh, we update the dictionary. And um, with such updated dictionary, we uh, we start another cycle and and try to improve the existing uh, automation or uh, go for another area. Um, in this particular project uh, that Andre talked about, um, the um, the the solution uh, lets us to uh, visualize and automate the uh, discovery of issues and classify and automatically report the the, the core of the service uh, for our customer um, the customer was able to uh, better understand the data they got from the customers 
from their customers. Their engineers were able to uh, understand the data more easily and come up with better conclusions. Uh, I will be happy to share the uh, examples later, but I would like to mention also that we had some measurable uh, gains in this project. Uh, in first three months, we revealed that the uh, review time for a particular piece uh, of uh, high-tech uh, equipment reduced from 22 to 5 hours. Uh, the, the feedback to the factories were imme was immediate. So right after the engineer completed the, the review, the, the, the tests, uh, he was just, uh, he, she was just, sending the review directly to the customer so there was no unnecessary delay um, the quality of uh, of the service of our customer raised by 16 percent so their customers were much more satisfied with with the services they provided um, and the dictionary of problems expanded from 17 to 29 possible flops it means that in, in the past, the customer um, identified problems and categorized the problems into one, uh, as the problem was each of the problems that was found in the piece of equipment that was delivered to, the, to, the, to our customer uh, was classified to one of 17 categories in the past. And after implementing the machine learning part, uh, among others, uh, we were able to uh, be more precise and report the issues uh, in one of 29 as one of 29 categories uh, each of them. Uh, the overall uh, rate of uh, return of uh, investment was um, nine, uh, 49%, which is which is very impressive. Um, I mentioned the, the classification. Uh, this is prob this is a very technical term in machine learning. Um, in um, in natural language, we very often say categorization, and it means um, this term describes the the process where the model tries to attach a label to a certain uh, data. And here we ha we see an example where uh, where the um, model uh, labeled uh, certain areas as uh, as potentially uh, problematic and attached a label classified into the possible cause. Uh, the outcome of the visualization was that we replaced the Excel sheet with tons of data, tons of numbers, with the visualization, which was very helpful for engineers' brains to understand it more easily, as we all human prefer visualizations over numbers. Um, and now coming to the end, I would like to answer the uh, myths, uh, address the myths that uh, Andre, my colleague, mentioned at the beginning of this uh, of this webinar. So, um, the success of this uh, project was uh, the, the, the recipe for the success in this project was uh, that we started small with a low hanging fruit. Uh, it, when transforming your company for AI, this is a very good approach to think big and try to look at the bigger picture, but then identify a very small part of uh, this picture and try to automate it. And um, this way you can uh, optimize the, the ROI and take those um, paths that uh, are the most promising uh, for, for a quick return. Um, Sometimes when you need explainability, uh, sometimes because the explainability of the decisions is uh, sometimes dictated by law and sometimes by by the company policy or people's pe people's willingness to trust uh, the decision maker. So it's always easier to trust someone who can explain their decision. And uh, in this in this particular project, we implemented this this visualization module where the the model the the, the machine learning uh, model uh, mm, suggested the decision and shown the area of uh, of the material based on which this this decision is suggested and this way mm, it was much easier for the engineers to trust such uh, such uh, technology um, people are often uh, afraid of uh, 
replacing people with AI. And uh, we see two major scenarios in our clients, uh, in our clients' houses. Um, in this particular project, we uh, increased the efficiency of the engineers and allowed them to uh, utilize their skills more efficiently instead of uh, using the time to understand the very complex numerical data they were just able to look at the data uh, from another angle and make the decision based on their uh, very unique skills. The other scenario is that um, when the process gets automated, uh, our customers often move their employees from uh, who used to manage this process in the past to uh, research on new services that they could uh, that they could offer to their customers as those employees already know the business and the area where this company operates and it's much much cheaper than recruiting and training new person um, companies often uh, bother that, that are afraid that they don't have enough data uh, in fact quality is more important than quantity and um, as um, as we we've shown um, you don't uh, need to start with the machine learning part and even if you don't have the high quality data yet uh, we uh, we will assess this at the very beginning and uh, will help you to transform to a company which is data oriented data driven and uh, will help you to collect improve the process of data collection from the very beginning so when we uh, we and you um, become ready for the machine learning project uh, implementation we'll have the quality data uh, uh, that the machine will be able to understand and uh, and make decisions ba decisions based on that um, and in terms of processes uh, many of you mentioned that uh, the complexity of the processes somehow is an obstacle for you to introduce artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, into your company and um, I agree that word is complicated and uh, the good news is that we are not trying to uh, we are not trying to uh, model the whole world with, with all of its complex complexity we're not trying to to model at the very beginning the whole company uh, and uh, currently, uh, on the other hand, the, the technology is currently uh, mature enough to model very complex processes. But what we usually do um, to secure the uh, interest of our client, we start from uh, finding a small, simple part of this complex process, uh, which is uh, which has the greatest uh, the greatest uh, room for improvement and uh, automate this piece and then go piece by piece part of part, part by part to automate the whole the whole complex process um, our message is that uh, the rapid workshops and rapid prototyping are the way to go the first the first savings in our clients uh, case study uh, happened after six weeks after we started uh, six weeks is a uh, is a period in which the proof of concept can uh, bring first value and can be delivered. Um, among our customers and our projects, we see that the average ROI is all, uh, over automated processes is over uh, is approximately 19 percent. And um, and we encourage you to trust your experts in numbers and uh, try to combine the the expertise of your engineers of your employees and uh combine it with uh, with the state of the art uh science uh which is now happening uh, thank you for your attention you. and uh now i would like uh, to give my give the floor to uh, to daniel who will moderate the question and answer uh, stage Okay, also from my side, uh, thank, thank you for uh, your attendance. So I, I hope you find something what, what you can take home and bring you some value. And in case of any questions, please come over to us and we would like to, we, to, to assist you in, in the way we would like to go with machine learning. So now we have a few minutes for, for uh, answers and uh, questions. Uh, and uh, let us use this time. Daniel, go ahead. 
Right. Well, normally this is where the Q&A session would come in, but uh, I can see now that uh, we have uh, 10 uh, a.m. And <clears throat> this is actually the end of our webinar. Mm, if you do have any questions, um, you can address them directly either to Anjay or to Adam, or you can also contact us uh, via our contact us form on the website. Um, well, um, there's nothing left for me to say then. Uh, I am very glad that you attended. Thank you very much for uh, being with us here today and thanks for being part of the Industrial Generation Network. So we will see each other on the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.